Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'll do my best to get through this as quickly as I can. Um, so 10th Avenue here, uh, very close to where we are right now. Um, it's been a, what we call a local street bikeway uh, since 2004. And it's been a four plus year journey uh, of uh, taking sort of this West 10th Avenue and and, and, and uh, sort of creating a new sort of street and a new brand to that street uh, and incorporating this idea of a, a hospital zone on, on West 10th. And in a way, I like to talk a bit about this whole project. It's been a, a, an interesting um, an interesting kind of exploration of some of the tensions between providing um, healthcare services and providing healthy environments. Uh, that can be kind of a challenging thing to unravel sometimes. Uh, and it's been interesting lately, uh, you know, we're tapped into a few listservs uh, in, in North America around transportation design and this issue of uh, dealing with um, providing a safe and comfortable cycling environments in and around uh, health services has been coming up in a lot of other cities. Even this morning, Cambridge was talking about an example there at the Cambridge Hospital. So it's uh, on a lot of other cities' minds. So uh, in Vancouver, we have uh, these what we call mode share targets. The green and blue bars are sort of the proportion of walking and cycling, uh, you know, seen, and this is kind of across the bottom is, is our, the years. And 2020, we've actually already met those targets, but we had very aggressive 2040 targets, uh, which now our council's declared a climate emergency. So we're saying we want to try and achieve those even earlier than 2040, so now it's 2030. So we have uh, pretty progressive, you know, motor targets in terms of encouraging people to walk and bike more often, take transit. So a big part of that is uh, trying to make the walking and cycling environment in Vancouver more comfortable, um, more uh, convenient, safer, and this ties back to, the, we often talk about all ages and abilities infrastructure. Um, and so that's kind of like, what we're really trying to do is encourage people, especially around cycling, who are interested but concerned is sort of the language we often use, trying to encourage them, uh, trying to give them environments that, you know, helps them feel comfortable getting around the city uh, by bike. And so a lot of that means moving away from, on the left side here, away from the sort of painted infrastructure and more towards uh, having physical separation from vehicle traffic. So moving towards the right side of that, of that spectrum. Uh, and so the city right now, we have what we call our triple A or our all ages and abilities cycling network. Uh, this is the lines that are sort of highlighted in yellow. And we're working really hard to expand a lot of the bikeways in the city uh, to expand that AAA network. And so, a bit of a delay here. Sorry. How come this isn't working anymore? Oh, there we go. So that leads us to 10th Avenue. <laughs> uh, so 10th Avenue is about seven kilometers long. Uh, it, it runs parallel to Broadway, which is a very busy commercial street. Uh, it's one of the busier sort of utilitarian cycling routes in the city. Um, and a lot of it looks like this. Um, this is sort of the, how we used to do a lot of our local street bikeways in Vancouver. Uh, we were in some of what we call traffic circles to slow down traffic uh, a little bit. Uh, a lot of it's just kind of like very local street feel. Um, however, there are some areas along 10th, along those seven kilometers, and not just this area I'm going to talk about, but some others, where that local street uh, is pretty busy, and it's not the most comfortable place for you biking to be sharing the street with, with vehicles. Um, so what is the challenge, you know, in this stretch of 10th that I want to talk about? So on the left, this is what, uh, this is actually just outside of the hospital zone, just to the east of, or sorry, west of Oak Street, uh, and on the right, that's sort of right in the, the core, the epicenter of, of this hospital zone. You'll notice actually the street is very similarly designed. Uh, the width from curb to curb is the same. You've got on-street parking on one side of the street. So the point I'm trying to just make here is that the street through the hospital zone was never designed to be accommodating all of the operations that are happening there. Um, it just, it's sort of, the area's kind of grown in a sort of organic way um, for, about 100 years now, uh, 
be accommodating a lot of operations. So we have um, issues with uh, the emergency department access is on and off of 10. We also have um, a lot of uh, pedestrians in the area who are low mobility, uh, being out of the hospital area. So really heightened accessibility needs. We also have a lot of uh, passenger loading needs in the area. Um, we also have, as a result, a lot of vehicles that have special access needs, like Handy Dark here. Um, we also have a lot of hospital operations uh, happening in the area. Uh, the biggest trucks that come in and out of here are laundry uh, delivery, actually, which is four or five times a day. And those are big semi-trailers having to access on and off 10th Ave. Uh, it's also very narrow and constrained right away. Um, kind of goes without saying, but it's a busy street. There's a lot of vehicles using the street. It's around uh, 5,500 uh, vehicles every day. A lot of pedestrian activity. We also have because it's a very um, busy bike route. A lot of people biking on the street. There's just a lot generally going on here, uh, and there is was in places on street parking uh, because of it being so close to a lot of the main entrances to these buildings. Very busy on street parking, and uh, to make matters you know more complicated for us, a really mature tree canopy and much of the street. And that's kind of a big part of the brand of, of 10th Ave. And they happen to be elm trees, which we actually have to work really hard to protect because we don't have uh, Dutch elm disease problems here. So uh, the thing that people can agree on is uh, when we started the conversation that it wasn't or isn't working now. <laughs> Um, that was an easy one, but then I get a lot of just sort of shoulder shrugs. I don't know what you can do about it. Uh, so, kind of going back, this is going back about four years in terms of where that, where did we start that conversation? So, typically on a big project like this, we have these three phases of engagement. The first phase is very high level. We're very sort of just talking broad strokes. Uh, what, uh, what are developing our goals around this project? What are, what do you? see works, what doesn't work on the street. Um, so in that conversation, we started talking about, you know, these big uh, city goals around our Mocha targets, going back to that stuff we're seeing earlier, wanting to expand our AAA bike network. Um, we worked with the public to identify some hotspots along 10th Ave, sort of where people were seeing a lot more problems. Uh, this area kind of in the middle is the, the hospital zone or the VGH area, so it was uh, being flagged a lot. Uh, and then we talk a bit about these are the vehicle volumes in different segments along 10th. So I've highlighted here in yellow that's the VGH area. So quite a bit more traffic in this area compared to some of the other stretches. So, you know, not surprising that we're seeing a lot of red dots in the previous slide. And so, you know, as a result, and because it's a hospital area, we typically, you know, sometimes when we see a lot of traffic, one possible response to that is to try and traffic calm the area. So put in traffic diverters, these sorts of things to try and bring the traffic volumes down to a level where you could be sh comfortable sharing the street um, you know, with drivers. Because it's a hospital area, uh, that wasn't really an option. So we needed to work towards the right side of the spectrum to secure protected space for people walking separate from uh, vehicle traffic. So where can we get that space? Um, so on-street parking was sort of, of all the things happening on the street, that was one of the things that we felt um, we could make a trade-off, you know, the on-street parking space for um, securing some protected bike lane space. I'll get to this in a second, it's uh, a little more complicated than that, but we still needed some more space. On-street parking wasn't, wasn't enough. Uh, and one of my biggest constraints was the emergency, emergency department entrance. I couldn't do anything that proposed, I couldn't propose anything that might um, might affect, uh, you know, travel time to or from, from ER. So one of the early ideas we started working with uh, through conversations with stakeholders and the public was this idea, of, could we make 10th Ave one way so that it, it converged on ER, on those driveways? So getting there would be as direct as it used to be. The egress might be a little more circuitous. Conveniently, those Mature trees that I mentioned, there weren't really many uh, on the left side of this diagram, so near the kind of the epicenter of, of VGH. They're more of an issue on the east side. So we were able to move curb on the west side, 
without major tree impacts to, to achieve this. Um, <clears throat> so then we started kicking off into the second phase where we're putting some of these design options in front of the public, in front of stakeholders to get some feedback on what, how people feel about these different options. And so these were a lot of conversations because it's not just, as you guys know, it's not just CGH. There's a lot of other health services in the area, different institutions, also connecting with TransLink, with CMBC. Um, we have some advisory committees that we were talking with a lot around persons with disabilities, seniors, active transportation. It's quite, a, quite an extensive uh, engagement process. So we were you know, talking about could the bike lane be two ways on the north side? Could it be two ways on the south side? What about one way on both sides of the street? And sort of what do these all look like when you get to intersections? And we had stacks of sketches of different intersection designs that we were you know, exploring with all these, all these groups. And where we ended up landing uh, was this idea of one-way bike lanes on either side of the street. People were generally feeling that felt more intuitive. The intersections could operate more safely. And we had an example of that uh, just outside of the, of the hospital zone that we could point to. So it's just on the east side of Canby Street. <clears throat> so then we were, okay, leaning towards that design option, kicking off our third phase of engagement, um, where we're bringing out that sort of recommended design and asking people, did we miss anything? And sort of helping, you know, talk them through that, that design. Um, what did you do? And we, with that design in mind, we went back to, we have, uh, ICBC keeps all of like pretty extensive data on, on past collisions. So we went through and we're reading the descriptions of all the collisions that happened in that area. I think it was about 70 collisions or so. And we tried to just figure out, well, what, what happened here? And how might that be different under the proposed design? So we found out that you know, a lot of them actually were related to the on-street parking. So it's people doing you know, awkward U-turns or sort of backing out and and uh, hitting a pedestrian or a cyclist. There were a few at uh, Oak uh, and Tent. So when we sort of dissected all that, we felt that the design we're proposing, uh, 70 to 90 percent of the collisions that used to happen wouldn't be possible anymore. Um, not suggesting that you know, we're predicting that kind of reduction because we may well be introducing new, new problems with the new design, but uh, we thought this would you know, resonate well. Um, with the folks in, in healthcare that we were dealing with. Uh, however, <laughs> we were wrapping up that third phase, and I would say the seniors, the mostly the advisory committees that we were working with, the seniors, persons with disabilities, BCH and BC Cancer were all not on board. <laughs> um, and we were, it was starting to hit the media. We were seeing some really challenging headlines. Um, you know, I'm disabled and city's bike-friendly efforts don't feel friendly to me. These are really challenging headlines to respond to. And although uh, in terms of just general our, our transportation projects, we had a very supportive council at the time, um, it would have been putting our council in a really difficult position to be voting in favor of a project without the support of those really key stakeholders. And certainly as staff too, we did not want to be in that position. So we went back and sort of tacked on this whole other stage of engagement uh, right around Christmas, conveniently for everyone. Uh, and it meant going back to the drawing board in a sense, uh, doing a bit of a, a reboot uh, on this whole project and getting together for some really intense workshopping with DCH and DC Cancer. Um, and you know, to the credit of both the, the city and uh, the health institutions, we had really strong support from the top on making this happen and trying to figure out the solution. So we really went back, and we and we actually we brought in facilitators because there were some real trust issues between the institutions. Um, we brought in facilitators, uh, local and from the U.S., uh, to help with that discussion. And we went all the way back to just what are our goals on this project? What are we really wanting to achieve? What are the concerns that people are having? And we really took that whole conversation that I was talking about, you know, where this conversation started and turned it on its head. Because this project, like I said, I mean, we're trying to, you know, as staff, we've been trying to make the whole 10th corridor, so all seven kilometers, a AAA bike route. 
But the way we framed the conversation early on was that, you know, for this hospital zone, it's a part of this bigger project making a AAA bike route. But in the hospital zone, we're going to do that, uh, but we also want to make uh, improve the pedestrian environment because we've been holding off on a lot of pedestrian improvements for a while because we knew something was coming or we, we thought what something was coming to improve the cycling environment. But we've been saying that for about a decade <laughs> and just could never figure out uh, what to do to the streets. It was so complicated. So there are a lot of, there, there were and still are some remaining uh, serious challenges to accessibility uh, in the air on, the, on 10th Ave. So we really turned the conversation on its head and we're really clear that you know this is a separate project and our priority in this area is, is the emergency department access, is the vulnerable pedestrians, are the patients. And we're just very clear that, that, that those are our key goals. And while we improve the environment for these key folks, um, we also hope to get better cycling access that fits in with the broader project. So just that change in the tone of the conversation and where the conversation was starting helped immensely. We still, however, were facing um, uh, some serious constraints around just the, the width of the right-of-way and the mature trees, which we as staff had a pretty strong mandate to try and preserve. So the thing that really broke that deadlock uh, on kind of both sides. One is uh, SRW or statutory redway. So there are a couple of spots where BCH and BC Cancer offered up a sliver of property such that we could put a bit of sidewalk on private property. And that allowed us to just kind of thread the needle around these trees um, to be able to get the two-way portion through most of that those five blocks. Um, and also, but in so doing, there were a few mature trees that had to get cut down. So there was kind of a bit of give on, on both sides. And then, so this is kind of what that two-way flow is going to look like once phase two is completed. Uh, so we basically went before council. Once we got through that, um, we went to council with 10 actions. I'm not going to go through them all, um, but just some quick highlights. I think the one that everyone got behind with this idea of creating a hospital zone. And so the idea was kind of borrowed from, you know, school zones. And uh, if any of you have traveled and you're like me, you kind of nerd out and look at you know, a lot of the transportation features in other cities. You know, in a lot of European cities especially, um, they sort of the school zones are a little more obvious, you know, they're a little more like gateways. And so we're kind of borrowing from that, this idea of creating a very clear gateway into a hospital zone that messages to people driving and people cycling that this area is a little different and your, your behavior expectations ought to be a little different. Um, and we landed on calling it a hospital zone. We, this, there was this big process uh, with stakeholders where we got together to try and figure out a brand. We landed on a hospital zone. We felt that the word hospital really communicated a lot of that. It sort of embedded that you ought to expect to find vulnerable pedestrian patients. So be a little more careful rather than lengthy, wordy, sort of, you know, slow down because they're that, 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 you know. So we landed on this sort of succinct hospital zone language. Uh, also, rather than calling it a health care zone or something like that, we felt hospital had that stronger message and created a, a whole sign family. And so that's that, that sign you saw earlier, that's sort of a part of a, a larger branding of, of this hospital zone. And so this is that old content, what it used to look like from Street View, um, just to give you a sense of that kind of that gateway treatment. This actually is a little out of date because some, some larger um, gateway signs have been added on either side of the street. Uh, you may have a, this is what it looks like from above. Uh, okay, here. So this is on 10th looking sort of outside of the hospital and this is what the gateway signs look like. Um, so really creating like a clear, yeah, entry point into, into the hospital zone. The other thing we did spend a lot of time on was improving the pedestrian environment. Um, so a big part of that was coordinating with BC Ambulance to figure out what their their priority routes were to um, to ED, and that allowed us to focus on some of our traffic calming efforts. So like raising the whole intersection and raising some crossing outside of their priority routes, because any vertical deflection is a, a problem for for ambulances. So we sort of um, we, we sorted that out with them. This is a, a Willow intent. 
where the whole intersection has been raised. Um, and some other improvements like bulging out. So this on the, on the top side or the north side of the street here, it used to be on-street parking through these actually legal crosswalks. Uh, I think I have a photo here. Yeah. So this used to, on the left side used to be all on-street parking, um, sort of formalizing those crossings, having these zebra stripes through every crossing uh, to really clearly message the drivers uh, to expect pedestrians and yield to pedestrians, similarly for, for people biking. And there's a couple of pickup and drop-off zones. Uh, this is what they used to look like, so not the greatest conditions for that. But there was a lot of concern about the particular bike lane being introduced and going behind the passenger loading zone. Um, so we spent a lot of time with stakeholders debating some design approaches to, to how we would build this. One thing we did on the right side is we raised the vehicle space up so there's actually no longer a, a barrier curb, which is pretty important for handy dart vehicles, they're rear loading. So we got rid of that barrier curb. Uh, so this is all flush here on the right side. We also introduced these beveled curbs, which is a whole other conversation on, its, on itself, but these beveled curbs on either side of the bike lane, just to be very clear about um, uh, if you're stepping off of that lane area, you're crossing the bike lane. And then we introduced a couple of, I think I have a picture here, of designated crossings where the bike lane ramps up and we have a flush crossing um, at the loading zone. Uh, we also, so the on-street parking issues, I could go on and on about this. Basically, we took a look at the whole hospital zone and, and did a, collected a lot of data on parking in the area and found that there's uh, about 4,000 parking spaces in, in the area. 2% of that was the on-street parking that we were talking about removing, but even still, it's very, very visible. So, um, yeah, here's a good example of just how busy that on-street parking was. Um, so we also drove around the block many times to get a sense of like what the what the average availability of a space would be. And as you can tell, you know, the closer you are to the core, the sort of the epicenter of VGH, the harder it would be to find spaces. So you'd have to, if you're near EV, you'd have to actually drive around the block. I think it was about 10, 10 or 12 times before you'd actually find a space. The problem was to a lot of people that's important. So they're saying, you know, I hear you. It takes me 20 minutes to find that spot, but I do it because I need it because I'm with my mother who is, you know, 80 and, and can't walk very easily. So she needs to be near that front door. So our response was to where we could uh, work in, in these red boxes, uh, work in accessible, designated accessible spaces. So there used to only be one on tent. Um, when we complete this, it's going to be about, I think it's at last count, 12 spaces along 10th. Um, so uh, significantly increasing the designated space for the people who really need it. Okay, so I'm running short on time. I'm just going to skip forward. And I'll just mention um, a big part of the commitment we made to council was to continue to work with stakeholders to evaluate results afterwards. So after phase one completed, which is about a year and a half ago now, I believe, uh, we got together, formed a, uh, an actual formal committee, uh, got together with uh, actually Megan and a uh, professor from UBC uh, to help us out with doing an evaluation of a number of metrics, number of issues that were raised throughout engagement. So I'm not going to go through all that, but I'll just mention the, the VGH data from ER. So we have injury or sort of incidents at ER that, um, they're passed along to us every month. Uh, we've been monitoring, monitoring that really closely, and it does seem like so far there's been a 60% reduction in collisions in this portion of tent that's been upgraded. So really positive. Um, I'll just say, if you're interested in the weeds, there's a, uh, a lengthy report, about 60 pages or so online. Uh, I'd encourage you to check it out. It's been pretty positive. We did flag some things, though, that um, we want to improve. So as a part of the phase two, which is about to start, we're going to go back to some areas in phase one and make a few changes. And also it's helped inform the design of phase two. So it's been a really positive effort. So that's it. Any, any questions? 